Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of the UK Connection alongside my two comrades in arms, as always, Mr. Simon Bray and Mr. Stephen Reed, of course, from the UK themselves. What's going on, fellas? Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm, all good. I'm all good. And that's been a rough. Can, can we get some music chat? Come on, let's do it. Come on, come on. <laughs> well, we uh, you know, we, we we actually don't record these on Saturday, so of course uh, we are meeting just as the news uh, broke about Christine McVie. And by the time you're watching this, I've already posted a uh, tribute video and all that. So uh, just uh, again, thoughts go out to the uh, McVie. And perfect family and all the fans, uh, a sad loss in the rock community. So uh, rest in peace, Christine McVie. And now on to the task at hand today. Uh, we are going to be doing our favorite and least favorite albums from a great band called Dire Straits, who don't have a huge catalog, but some really good albums. So we'll somehow try to figure out our favorite and least favorites here. But before we do that, uh, we should go through the beverage selections of the day. I will tell everybody I am not drinking today because... After we do this show, I actually have places to go and drive. It's a little bit early in the day. We met a little bit earlier today. So so I'm partaking in water today. But Simon, I know, is not going to disappoint. So Simon, what you got? Hi. Simon the Incredible um, have got a uh, vocation bre uh, brewery. That's in Hebden Bridge in Yorkshire. That's how we say that word. Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Is, it? Got it. is it? Yeah. So Yorkshire. it's not York, no Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. uh, it's a heart heart and soul session IPA. So it's a nice little uh 4.4. So you know, I can I could drive you if you if you want to be a uh, cool. May, may have uh, you do also got a super cool uh vocation uh brewery glass as well. Ooh. Yeah, hold it on because I've been to Asda, that's pretty much it. <laughs> while, while watching it up. Cool. Stephen, how about you? I am back on Wasted Degrees. Well, an amber rye this time. I had one of the dark beers last time, which was very, very good. This is a brewery from Blair Athol, which is not far from me at all. 5%. It's got a lot to live up to with the first one I had, because it was really, really good. I'm always going to prefer a darker beer, so this one's kind of it's going to come second best. I can tell you that before the start. But it looks nice. It looks lovely. Those are good. Well, cheers again, my uh, in-rock tumbler of ice cold water. Mm. Mm. So for all of our beer haters out there, and yes, we do have a handful of them who just absolutely hate the beer segment on this show, we only spent two minutes. So there you go. Shots 19, the 19. That's what I heard. Yeah, there you go. So uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Dire Straits. Very cool band. We've uh, been talking about doing this for a few weeks. Uh, they only have, uh, what, six albums? Six studio albums? Yep. A couple of live albums? Studio. Good catalog. Good catalog. Kind of kind of difficult. I found when I did the uh, the Ranking the album show of this with Steve Fleck oh, a couple of years back, that was difficult. And uh, I had to go rewatch that because I wasn't even sure how I ranked them because I most of these are pretty similarly of great quality. So I rewatched that and so if it uh, meshed with the way I'm currently thinking, and it did not. So, spoiler alert for those watching, if you remember uh, my Dire Straits ranking video, it's going to be a little different today. So uh, with that being said, I'll have Simon kickstart us off with his uh, two favorites in the catalog. I remember that video mainly because I watched it this afternoon. <laughs> there you go. As did I. Yeah. I. I have not. I have not. So I, I will go and watch that after we've done this. Me and I think something like 28,000 other people. So we've got lots to look forward to, haven't we? Yes, indeed. Um, and this is all my fault, isn't it? Because I blindly said, hey, why don't we do Dire Straits? There's not many of those albums. <laughs> yeah, thinking we'd rank them. Then I didn't realize, because now obviously I didn't realize that you'd already ranked them, didn't I? And I thought, shit. <laughs> got to favorite them and least favorite them. And then I thought, I haven't had that, what Stephen Reed would call a journey with them. Um, Thank you. I have to help. Um, I, I know people love the impressions. Um, yeah. I, yeah. Simon, I don't think they expected you to do me. I think they expect famous people. Oh. Yeah, I think I'm, you've got to somehow now squeeze out Mr. Knopfler. Oh, I've, I, well, I'm sure I will do at some point. Uh, but you've, um, he did a good job, though, I will say. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <You've>, uh, <laughs> 
I now count you amongst my uh, favourite uh, um, celebrity fan, friends, you know, along with John <laughs> and Colin Hay and Richard, um, whatever he's called from the Rocky Harrow pick pick. Rocky Harrow. Rocky, Rocky Harry Pictures. Okay. Yeah, there was a, uh, Richard yeah. O'Brien. I knew I'd get there eventually, you know. So maybe Stephen, one of these days you'll get your own little meme as well. <laughs> we can, you know, eventually we'll get that shit one. But anyway, dire straight. I, I have a good idea of why it might be and I can't show it on a family show, so let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? Yes, dire straight. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um Dire Straits have kind of like always been there, haven't they? Even though they haven't been there for the last 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. And what I will say is that Alchemy is the, practically the only record I've ever given away. Gave it away? I gave it away. I gave it away on vinyl because somebody did something very, very kind for me. Okay. Very kind indeed. And I thought, you keep papping on that you haven't got it. There you go. Thank you. But yeah, not that it was grudged at all. <laughs> no, not in the slightest, but um, it was a very, very, very kind thing that he did. Um, that said, though, I've never really owned much Dire Straits until Sainsbury's stopped selling um, CDs, which is only a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. And when it closed, as they were selling selling stuff off, they were selling the box set off for um, just £11.99 of your pence. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You've got to, haven't you, at that point? All yeah, right, you've I, got. I might, have, you've I might got, have at that price. You've got to. So, so I did, and you know, they, they actually came out of the car earlier this week because they stayed in the car, you know, because the good shit stays in the car. So yes, absolutely. After driving around for two years with the straights um, rotating in and out, I'm now twenty eight minutes in, ready to give my verdict. Yes, <laughs> yes, I am, and. Um, in many ways, well, it's kind of my my kind of changed from what I thought. But my least favourite has always been my least favourite, and will remain so forever. So hey, I've listened to them all, and here we go. Are you ready? So my Ooh. two favourites, and let's be honest, because I don't have that journey. Um, they're also what I consider to be their best. So Brick Bats at the ready. Um, my favourite slash uh, best for me is the Love Over Gold. Oh, let's go with an R. And making movies. Yeah, do you know why? Because they're the most Springsteen-y. That's why. The most Springsteen? That's, a, that's an most. interesting... Uh, okay. Um, Love Over Gold is absolutely fucking great. You know, um, Telegraph Road takes some balls to start a record off with a 15-minute song like that, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. No, it really, really does. not Private Investigations is just... So good. Now, on the thing I watched this afternoon, Pete, you was you weren't very nice about his vocals. You weren't, you weren't very nice. Well, you you even suggested that there were a bit of me Dillany, me yeah, a bit Dillany, yes, <laughs> yes, and you it's couldn't bad. even remember his name. Yeah, I, I did watch. Um, but yeah, just that was a massive hit single in the UK, wasn't it, Stephen? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They re- reached number two, and I thought to myself, because you know, I'm interested in that kind of shit. What else? What else was charting at that point? Was it because it's not? It's it's long. Yep. It's got it's got a spoken vocal. It's not really a a chorus. It's got some big chords. Um, it's just a very very atypical single. You know, it's just, it was like nothing else that was around. So I thought, what else was around at the time? So when it um. When it charted at number two on the 12th of September in 1982, I of the Tiger was number one. Thank you. Duran Duran, Save a Prayer, were number three. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, that's, I guess, an all right song. Mm, no, it isn't. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's go to Sri Lanka and make a video. Let's fuck off. Yeah. Um, the Jam, what? The Vitreous Pill, we're, we're number five. ABC, big production. Hmm, big 80s production. I wonder if that'll get a mention later. I don't know. The Kids from Fame. Fame. Yes. Yes, indeed. Um, Grandmaster Flash and his really angry five. Yeah. Come on, Eileen. Shalomar. Oh, wow. In amongst the crap was uh, private investigation. 
Yeah. And one thing I really, really like about this album, apart from the Springsteen in Asia, is the piano sound is magnificent. Yes. Especially, especially on um, private investigations. It's just so clean and actually like a piano. Which often isn't the yeah no often isn't the case is it but you know um, industrial disease <laughs> makes me chuckle every time even though it makes me think oh I wonder what they could possibly go in for in the non too distant future um, I really I really really like the song it's probably my favourite by um, quite some distance um, making movies I wonder why it's so um, so Springsteen it looks at the credits oh. Yes. Roy Bitten. Yep, there you go. Whereas I would suggest that this one is played in a bit of the style. Eh? This actually does have your Uncle Roy on it. Yeah, and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, seven excellent song and Lay Boys, which is amongst the biggest piles of crap I have ever, ever heard. Do we agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No okay. arguments from, from the rest of the killer, killer, though. Yeah, but yeah, uh, it's nothing to do with with the lyric or anything. Like, it's just really bad, really bad song. You know, <laughs> after Tunnel of Love, Romeo and Juliet, Skate Away, Romeo and Juliet, Hello, um, Express All of Handing on Solid Rock, which is really solid and relatively rocking for the Strays. That turns up, and otherwise that might have been uh, number one. Um, yeah, the Strays, they've always been there. They're a fixture of UK culture, despite not having actually physically been there for uh, 30 odd years now. It's a long time. It is a long it time. It is, and you know, it's a long time. I'd like to talk about his unique guitar style, which occasionally I think, um, occasionally I'm listening to, to The Straits and I think, go on, just, 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 you know, just really let rip. Really, really, really go for it. Pret pretend you're in a metal band. But he doesn't, and that's that's fine because one thing that he is is um, Mark Knopfler is unbelievably identifiable as a guitarist. Yes, he really is, and that's a, that I think in a world of homogeneity is a good thing. I know. Yeah. So uh, my my two my two favourites and what I consider to be their best: Love Over Gold and Mickey Movies. Yay. Okay. So when we came to do this, I say when we came to do this, when Simon blurted out that we should do this and we agreed, I came to the realisation that, like Simon, I have not bought a lot of Dire Straits until, well, I haven't. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> th this, this is half of my Dire Straits collection. Well, it's a third. It's a third. There has been a more recent edition. But, so this is a third of it. And this is the greatest hits. And yeah, okay, there's there's some nice stuff on here. Okay, this is it's not a bad greatest hits album. But as I've gone and done this, and I have heard all these albums lots of times because they were in my house when I, when I was younger. What I've discovered is what I really wanted is the non-greatest hits. That's what I really want from Dire Straits. This is really not where it's at. For me, anyway. Not for me. So, somebody will need to do all of the this thing for me, okay? And my favourite, and by a distance... Is love over gold. Okay, it makes absolutely zero sense that this album went double platinum. I've never really considered the spring steamy side to it, but I can see where you're coming from. I do kind of get that kind of stark atmosphere. There's an honesty about it. Northler at this stage and the band in general are still kind of very much working class or mm. that. So the lyrical here. concerns are quite work, working class. Right? And he mentions yeah. highways as well. So yeah. They're very much a people's band. I don't know if that carries right with the catalogue. I think that the idea of it does. I don't quite know if they follow it through in the same way. But this went to number one in a huge variety of places. The UK, Australia, Austria, Italy, New Zealand, Norway. I love this album. It's To me, it's the grown-up album. This is the one that really kind of doesn't worry about what anyone's going to think. It is just putting moody song after moody song 
Telegraph Road, you could pretty much pick that song up and put it on any of these albums, and I would just about proclaim it was the best. Because I just absolutely adore that song. To me, it's a crowning achievement. I just think that the slow, patient, and it, it's ever building. It never quite gets there. I like that. That's not a criticism that it never quite gets there. It just takes you along on that journey all that time. And it drags you, and you're still kind of waiting at the end. But then you think to yourself, well, they have to do something, you know, much more buoyant and upbeat and in your face to kind of counter that. There's two songs on the old fashioned side one here. I mean, chart bands, pop bands, which they were kind of viewed at because of the, the amount of volume they were selling. They did put two songs on a side, but no, no, we get private investigations. And it just continues that mood. It's a whole side of that mood. The difference here is that they're clever enough to give you a payoff. So you do get... And I love it. absolutely love it. And that piano that really sounds like piano. That... Ching, 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 dun, 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 ching. It's genius. It's absolute genius. And I, I could listen to that side over and over again. Side two... For me, it isn't quite so strong. It Never Rains does kind of keep that same atmosphere. It's got that same sort of feel to it. I find the rest of it a little throwaway in comparison to what else is there. I, I would love them to have been brave enough to do a whole album of that really somber, moody, kind of down brow kind of stuff. But I love it. It's a really great album. It is fantastic, and I really should have it in my collection, to be fair. That's that's my main takeaway from this exercise, is I need not necessarily the box set, but for £11, I would have bought it. But I do need to have Love Over Gold, because it's just a stunning album. The rest for me, this is where I found this really difficult. I have two, in my opinion, two obvious least favourites. They stand out, not in a bad way, but they're clearly my least favourites. But choosing my second one was really difficult, and I've actually gone for the debut. And I like the debut because it's just got no pretenses about it. It's got really, it's got a shit album cover. They've, I mean, I know, I know a lot of people like certain album covers in this in this collection. I think that they're all universally boring. They're all boring. They're really boring. And I think the ones, and I'll cover it later on, giving some stuff away there. The ones that have that people will now go, oh, a great cover. It's an iconic image because of the album it's on, not be the other way around, in my humble opinion. But there you go. So yeah, I really like this album. I, I'm That said, that if I never heard Sultans of Swing in my life ever again, I would die happy. I utterly loathe that song. I didn't like it when I first heard it. I didn't like it when I heard it last week or this week. Really, really don't like that track. However, I really do like Down the Waterline, Water of Love, Set Me Up. It's a really good opening trio to that album. There's a real vibrancy, and they kind of set out their intention. And Simon really has hit the nail on the head. There's nobody else, even at this stage, right from the first album. Northler starts to play, can't be anybody else. The style, the tone, the finger picking, the whole thing that goes on, it's really... For a band that realistically play a bit of swing, a bit of blues, and a bit of rock and roll, they sound like nobody else. Yeah. That's really, really clever. <laughs> really, really clever. And across six albums, there are different styles, different ways of approaching it, and they still don't really sound like anybody else. But yeah, my favourite by a distance, a real distance, is Love Over Gold. And my second favourite is the Dire Straits self-titled debut album. Well, it's interesting because uh, when I did this exercise, you know, ranked the whole catalog a couple of years back, uh, the debut album was my number two. And in re-listening to these albums recently again, um, kind of fell back a little bit further. Still think it's great. Uh, but what took its place was Love Over Gold, which I think, you know, and Simon watched the episode today as well. So uh, I, I think even when I did it a couple of years ago, I really struggled with the debut in this one and which one to put over the other. And I ultimately then went with the debut. It's this one now for a lot of the reasons you guys said. I mean, you know, those first two tracks, so great. So, so great. 
Uh, I like Industrial Disease. Title track is good. I mean, it's just immense. I mean, how many times do I say sometimes an album ranks high because there are a couple of songs on there that you love so much, even if a couple of the others don't quite hit the mark because you love those tracks so much. And that's, you know, Telegraph Road and Private Investigation without question. Just amazing. Among the best songs these, this guy, this guy, this, this band ever did. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Love Over Gold as my number two. And still holding out for me as my favorite is, and this is the first one I ever listened to, the first one I ever got, uh, that's Making Movies. To me, this is their, this is like their rock album. It's this album rocks, it's pretty upbeat. Uh, you know, I love Tunnel of Love. Uh, such a great, great song. And again, one of you guys mentioned before, you know, who who starts off an album with a, you know, 14 minute long track and then follows it up with another long one. And they open up this one with an eight minute long track. It's just like, it's just like, they don't give a shit. They're like, ah, this is what we're going to do. I don't care. Uh, but Romeo and Juliet is gorgeous. Skate Away is so much fun. Express a Love, great song. Hand in Hand, solid. Solid Rock is great. I wish that was a little bit longer. Yeah, Liz Boy sucks, but uh, the rest of it is just so good. So uh, yeah, making movies. To, to me, this is their, their, they have their big commercial album, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a little bit. They have their moody experimental album. They have the first two, which are kind of similar. This is their big rock album. It's like, all right, we can we can we can do arena rock stuff now. So that's my top two. Back to Simon for the least favorites. You've met me. You know what this is going to be, don't you? Yes. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> I have a complicated relationship with this uh, record. Um, not this actual version, but it was the first compact disc I ever bought, but not for myself. Somebody said, Simon, I'm 21 next week. Will you buy me um, Brothers in Arms by Dire Straits as my first CD? So I did. I, I remember buying it from uh, WH Smith in, uh, in Accrington. And I was that ashamed that I put it under the porn and the daily sports and everything else. Because <laughs> it's just so commercial. <laughs> I just... I, 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 I've re-listened to it and, and everything I've disliked about it in the past, I still dislike. And very, you know, Stephen, you said it earlier, you know, um, and very, we said it about Journey, didn't we, you know, but the golds in the um, non-hits, that's not true on this. No. It's just, just not true. The non-hits are shite. <laughs> and the hits are desperately annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and it sold millions and millions of copies, yeah. right? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so this is obviously, once again, as always, always the way, my fault. I'm just completely out of touch with popular culture and always have been and possibly always will be. Oh, money for nothing. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, gosh. No, 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 no. no. I, I, I don't want my MTV. I don't, I don't want anything to do with it. But I, I, res I, I reserve special ire for Walk of Life. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> you know, you know, for, for somebody who has sat here for the last what twelve to eighteen months, going, God, I love keyboards. <laughs> please keyboard me up a bit more. Oh, please make it more like Europe. No, 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 no. <laughs> that said, the title track's really good. Yes, that track's just magnificent. But, oh, just to get there, you know, because you know that I, 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 you know, I can't listen to an album without going straight to finish. I don't, I don't just go to the good stuff, you know. That's, you know, probably why I'm the way I am, you know. So that's my OCD. It's got to start off at one, go all the way to uh, the end, and uh, I've done it a few times, and I don't feel like it's got any more Simon friendly. But you know, thirty odd million people around the globe. No, they're wrong. They're just completely wrong. <laughs> they're, they're wrong. Simon's right. That's how it works in Simon Land. Yeah, just no. I will I, I will never ever listen to this again. It's going, it's going with Led Zeppelin 4 just over there. That's where it's going. Is that yeah. the Ben Boyle, is it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So are you just doing the one again, Simon? Yeah. 
I, I, I can't lean. I can't lean. I have one of these does. on every show. Someone who's he's he's this pulling is, a this casino, is, this he's is, being a killer. This is the gentleman you know, who said, "Can we not just rank them?" We're just going to call this Simon Says from now on. That's, that's, that's I'm, I'm, he's going to pull the Simon Says. Oh. <laughs> Look, I've, I've seen the title of the program. It's the UK Connection. I'm fifty percent of the UK part of the UK Connection. I'm doing my fifty percent. So it works. So if I do two albums, what percentage is that? God knows. Anyway, right, moving along. I'll teach maths. <laughs> maths is, I'm not allowed to teach maths because I, I can't do it. I think by Simon's logic, Brothers in Arms is so bad it's going to take up both bottom spots. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you've given him an out. Don't give him an out. I'm just, saying, I'm just trying to rationalize it here. I don't know. Right, okay. Well, I've I've chosen two. I've chosen two. Oh, well really done, Mr. R Mr. Like Rule, man. Well done. Oh, you're such a rebel. Ooh. Well, no, I'm not a rebel. I'm following the rules. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I also like to talk about things that I think are not very good. <laughs> Here, I can find two that I don't think are great. So my least favourite is actually on every street. It's maybe not their worst. Thank you very much. Now, I should have been able to do with it, because I did own this on vinyl, and I don't appear to anymore. This has been lost, or possibly it was given to someone that probably didn't do me a massive favour. <laughs> <laughs> Take that off, off my hand, please. Because I've never really liked very much about this at all. It feels to me like an album that was made without much love. It's not got the same vibrancy as even the ones that I'm not so keen on here. It's definitely not got the same kind of authenticity of the early stuff. And I know that we're maybe arguably beyond that. I mean, there's stuff here that is decent. Calling Elvis is fun, and the bug is fun. Title track's decent. But after that, it kind of really goes a bit easy ozy. Kind of falls into that middle-of-the-road place that Simon doesn't like to be. And that dance rates manage to avoid. You don't like it when it goes in the middle of the road, Simon. You don't like it when it goes in the middle of the road. This is a middle-of-the-road album. It's not dangerous, it's not dark, it's not moody, it's just it's just there. It's just selling lots of units after they've already been very famous and probably weren't a band anymore until somebody went, one more, one more, and then we'll let you go. And that's what I feel about this album. It's that album. It's that album where kind of like, because to me it's clear that Mr. Knopfler does not want to do this, and that's why it is no more. So... This was the album that allowed him to do that, I would suggest. So My second last, favorite... last Gasp album. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's one of those ones that feels to me that it really was arm up the back, it needs to be done, and then that's us kind of thing. But who am I to criticise? So the other one I'm going to highlight is the studio album that I own. There you go. Um, it's probably the best album cover out of the lot. There you go, Simon, just for you. I still don't like it. And as I said earlier, yeah, somebody mentioned to us on Twitter that this is an iconic album cover. Well, it is, because it's not an album that was viewed as iconic. It's an all right album cover. That's what it is. It's the best of a lot. They're all rubbish. But there you go. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, what more to be said? This is corporate rock. This is as corporate rock as it can be. And that was not what this band were about in any shape or form. And I had a complicated relationship with the band at this stage as well, because they are a rock band. I was into metal at the time. And okay, what we called metal back in the day, such as that's what I was into at this stage, right? So things like Dire Straits were kind of viewed, that was, that was already old man rock was what I was at this stage. It's, you know, as the years go by and possibly I've become an old man and thought, some of that's all right, actually. There's definitely a model in the story here. <laughs> I didn't hate things like Money for Nothing, and I didn't at the time hate Walk of Life. They were the kind of acceptable rubbish that was in the charts. So, you know, it was better than, I don't know, Sunita or whatever it was that was bubbling away at that point. You know, well, you know. and But I couldn't love it. And I... <laughs> he is so much. So, thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Um... So, yeah, I have a complicated relationship with this, but as Simon has already mentioned, when you want to get to know an album, go past the singles. 
wow, they're shit. Beyond the singles on this album. It's just, it's boring and it's crap. And it's just, yeah, it's just bloated and forgettable. Absolutely forgettable. Really don't like it very much at all. So there's two here that I really don't like. The rest of the catalogue is pretty stellar, it has to be said. However, the title track is really good. But more of that later. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, you know, at the time when this came out, like you, Stephen, and probably Simon as well, I mean, I was into much, much heavier things, much heavier things. And I remember, you know, the big stadium tour and didn't they play it like Live Aid and all these big, you know, I mean, they were everywhere. And I remember when uh, Money for Nothing first came out, you know, that played all over the MTV constantly. But I remember thinking, ah, that's a kind of neat guitar riff, right? Ah, it rocks, whatever. Now I'm like, yeah, uh, Walk of Life is just terrible. Oh, holy moly. So far away, I can kind of deal with. To me, the best stuff on this album is the first track and the last track. So far away is okay. Brothers in Arms is terrific. I mean, that could have you could have slot that on Love Over Gold and I wouldn't have batted eye at all. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's very corporate. just very, I don't know, almost like Dire Straits selling out a little bit. And people love this. Man, I mean, it's sold a gazillion copies. I don't know. Maybe we're missing something. I don't know. Uh, and then uh, I would go with On Every Street, which I I think I ranked lower when I did this exercise a couple of years ago. But I think I think I would put Brothers in Arms at the bottom now. And I think this is a little bit better. It's not great either. Uh, it definitely seems like a band going through the motions. You know, Calling Elvis is OK. Even that's kind of like lethargic. Title track is good. I think Fade to Black is a terrific song. That's really moody and dark. Um, but you know, Planet of New Orleans, that's all right. Heavy fuels kind of kind of rocking. The bug is okay. I don't know. It's just kind of a boring album to me. Not a lot of great guitar work on it. It's okay, but not very good. But yeah, these are no brainer at bottom of the catalog. Everything else is good quality, I would say. So yeah. all right, wild card. I'm hesitant to say more because I know I'll be like, oh, so you think so. <laughs> well, wild card. Um, I'd like to stand up for uh, On Every Street. Okay. I mean, I'm not physically going to stand up, obviously. Um, yes, it is pretty much right in the middle of the road, but from Colin Elvis to Heavy Fuel is all good. As you so correctly say, Pete, Planet of New Orleans is pretty good. Now, there's a really good 10-track album in this. And I think it's one of those albums that um, suffer from the, hey, we can put loads of shit on this now. Mm. We can really go for it. So See, let's. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We can put any old toss on it. And some of it, some of it is old toss. But actually, you know, uh, um, first four are great. I really, really like the first four. Really, really. And then the book, you think, yeah, that's just as slightly insane as some of the other stuff that they've done, like uh, Industrial Disease. And I really thought, I'm going to bat this one into the middle of next week. And it's probably, other than um, Love I've Got, I've Got, the one that I've played the most over, over the past, you know, months or whatever we've been we've been thinking about this. Pull your face all you want, Stephen. I've got more to say. Um, I would also strongly recommend, although I can't show it because, you know, I may. Um, the thing, the um, soundtrack to Local Hero. Yeah. That's just, oh, it's just lovely. It's just so nice. It's just, just a, such a really well worked album. You know, how the motif runs all the way, all the way through, and then it builds up to Going Home, which is spectacularly wonderful, is it not? And it's really, it's a really great film as well. It's got Fulton McKay in it. I mean, how can that possibly go wrong? It's got Bert Lancaster, uh, Bill Foyce. Yes, thumbs up to both the uh, film and the album. Uh, but I've also, I've, I've shown this before. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to have a wild card as a book. This is John Ilsley's book. And I thought to myself, um, when we actually plumped to do to do Dire Straits, I thought, I've got that Dire Straits book. I'm going to dash down to my, to my palace outside and I'm going to finish that book that I started. And then when I sat down to read it, I realised I finished it quite some time ago. That's the level of, you know, niceness. Yeah, no, I'd say not a lot of crazy stories in a Dire Straits book. No, right? it's it's not like the crew or anything like that. You know what I mean? It's just, 
wow, just, you know, we did this, we sold loads of records. Ah, pick buggered off. Oh, David buggered off. Oh, well, that's a page. Uh, yeah, everyone's <laughs> nice. Do you, you know, spoiler, spoiler alert, close your ears if you haven't read it and you're planning to do so. Do you know who the only people he slags off in this book are? Would you like me to give you a clue? See if you can guess. Are you ready? See if you can guess from this excellent clue. Uh, it sticks. Wow. Yeah, I need to. I need to tame on this one. Okay. Why? Would you, would you like another clue? It yes. sticks. Apparently, they're arsey on tour in uh, in Europe and behave like dicks. So, stick sticks. Sticks like dicks. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but um, yeah, I genuinely thought I hadn't finished it, and there it was in the finished pile. It even took me a bookmark out and everything. I'm, I must admit that I'm struggling to work out how that book can be as I mean, the, the word's really big, it's a typeface really large. It's like, oh, you say it's like, like 500 pages. I'm like, yeah. really, it's, that, it's it's not, it's not that much of a story because I mean, how long were they together? Not that long, right? Not like, it's not 70s, early 90s. Little over a decade. Books where he goes into great detail of what happened when he was fourteen and things. Mm, yeah, no, nobody likes those. <laughs> but he, he, he gets relatively quickly to the uh, to the uh, it's kind of a, ch a churn, and you know, there's quite a lot about um, how they went to. Um, I want to say my and uh, you know, to the West Indies to make her. God, it's a hard life, isn't it? Yeah, terrible. Yeah, really hard life, but uh, yeah. If you I mean if you want to slip your brain into neutral and you see it when it comes out in paperback and it's cheap, yeah, take it on holiday. And then ask yourself some questions like what happened? <laughs> <laughs> ah yeah, so I didn't suggest this one. Uncle Simon suggested this one. And I was keen on the idea. I was keen on the idea, and I thought that at the end of it, what would happen is that I would go because one of the people that we interact with on Twitter has also said, oh, Stephen, you can actually get that for about £20, the, the six CD box set, get all the albums in one go. And I thought, yeah, okay. That sounds like good value to me, but not when I already have this. It doesn't. Because this really, I mean, I wouldn't give this away because this is all I need. This is all I need, realistically. And that is not to put down the majority of this catalogue. There are even upsides on the two albums that I'm not so keen on. The two in the middle that we've not spoken about, good stuff. The top two, yes, yes, re really like them. I don't need any more than this though, because this it's a, the definitive versions of everything that's on here. It, it's that good. It's atmospheric. It's feels live. The band are going for it. That th this is a this is a really intense, but not full on rock experience. It's not intense because they're heavy and it's massive. It's intense because it's clever and the arrangements are great and the musicianship's really, really tight. And the kind of interaction between the, the musicians is really, really strong, really, really good. And it, it kind of blew me away. Really, really like this album an awful lot. And I'm going to say more about Brothers in Arms later because I was convinced that that was a live single, but I don't see it on this. So I don't know if I'm a bit confused because the, the live single version is what's in my head is the version of that song that I really, really like. Isn't that on the other live album, the later one? Possibly. I, I've only got this one. Maybe I need to get all the live albums. And the, other one's really, the other one's really good as well. Yeah, I, Right, I, I, because I, I, looking through this, it kind of does tick those boxes of, of not being the greatest hits. That's really unusual for a live album too. This is Deep Cuts, played really well. I, I really, really like this. This is for anyone that doesn't know much about Dire Straits or that thinks it's all throwaway stuff like the singles that, that they're known for. Get this a blast. It really will, I think, realign your thoughts on the band completely. I've seen Martin off alive. Um, he played a bit of Dire Straits, played lots and lots of solo stuff because that's what he was doing at the time. And it was a tremendous experience, but it didn't come even close to this in any shape or form. And I did really enjoy going to see him and he was really, really good. But you put this on and you think, wow, I wish I, wish I was there. That This is something else. So my wild card is Alchemy. The two-disc version of Alchemy as well, preferably. Why it was not always that way, I have no idea. But that's that to me. This is really the beginning and the end. Although I will go and buy Love Over Gold. Yeah, I mean, I uh, part of me wanted to choose Communique as my wild card, but then I was like, ah, I don't know if I want to pick any of the studio albums. I think Communique is really good. 
Uh, so ultimately, I went the same route that Stephen did, and I chose Alchemy. My, I don't know, I got an older CD version, which has parts one and part two. I don't know, it came in, I don't, I don't know how it was. I like your little set a little better. But uh, yeah, I would echo everything you said here. This is terrific. Yeah, yeah, see, I got them when they separated. Yeah, they, they were sold together, but they... they yeah, I'll just release it as the two CDs set. Mm -hmm. uh, complete this, getting them all about twice, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, amazing tracks on here. They stretch out a lot of the songs. You really hear what amazing musicians they really were. Uh, and like you said, there's some definitive versions of some of these songs on here. I mean, you know, you got the Tunnel. The tunnel is amazing here. Telegraph Road is so good, solid rock. You got a, a, an incredible private investigations on here. Sultans of Swing is great. Once Upon a Time in the West, oh, what a great song that is. Everything on here is fantastic. And again, like I said, you get longer versions. It's a great recording. The crowd sounds totally into it. One of the underrated uh, live albums from the 80s, for sure. So that is my choice as well. Alchemy. Absolutely. I think in many ways it illustrates to me why I struggle with the latter two albums more than any others because this, I see this as much more of a musician's album. This is musicians. Well, energetic and, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? This is guys stretching out on stage but not for the sake of it. There's no fluff that's not just jamming that makes you kind of go, well, I won't be listening to this again. You want to hear the extended parts again. You want to listen to the, the bits that are not in the studio albums again. It's really, really clever. I really, really like it. I mean, it's not, it wouldn't be the first time in history where um, a very, very good band uh, just happens to have, like, you know, they just sound better live, right? I mean, I first band that came to mind when I started thinking about that, I'm like, you know, Foghat's a perfect example for me. I really like Foghat a lot, but their live album is by far my favorite thing by them. And it's just like, I like those songs in the studio versions, but man, on that live album, psh, that, that's the shit right there. So there's plenty other examples of that as well. It's not yeah. just Dire Straits, it's not just Foghat's. Yeah. Some bands just kind of, they, they take really good studio material and they play it on stage on tour and it's like, and it becomes a different beast altogether. So, yeah, I would say, Stephen, check out their later uh, live album. That's really good as well. Okay, I will do because I really do like that. Love it. Yeah, yeah. So there you have it, everybody. Uh, our favorite, least favorite uh, albums from Dire Straits as well as some wild cards and uh, let us know how you would do it in the comments below. Again, not a lot of albums here, so it's... Uh, this is a little little difficult of a task because a good chunk of them are very, very good quality. Uh be interesting to see how many Brothers in Arms fans we have down in the comments uh, after people watch this. <laughs> I guarantee you there'll be a lot. I guarantee you there'll be a lot, but that's okay. That's all right. We can't all like the same stuff. So uh, anyway, Stephen, you want to uh, let everybody know what we're doing next week? I think we're doing another one of Simon's favorite albums, are we not? Is that what we're doing next week? I think we are. I would tell you, but it would make me paranoid. That's what we're doing. We're doing ranking the songs on the classic album "Paranoid" by Black Sabbath. Can I tell you how excited I am for this episode? That is the that is, and I've I've said this a million times over the years. That is the album that changed my life, and I don't know if I've ever actually sat down and tried to figure out what order I like the songs on there. So I'm really I I haven't done it yet, but I am actually going to sit down and try and figure this one out because again, with me, it's. It's an iconic album for me. It's an important album for me. It's not my favorite Black Sabbath album, but it's it's the most important one. And I've heard it so many times that I have to try and, all right, how do I put them in an order? Because there are some songs on there I've heard a million times. So, you know, do they rank lower because of that? Or, you know, I have to, I have to come to grips with tracks like War Pigs and Iron Man and Paranoid because those are the iconic songs and we've all heard them a million times versus some really, really great deep cuts. And, uh, you know, like one not so great song, but people seem to like, I don't know, I'm not going to say anymore because we'll save for next week, but this is, this will be very interesting for me. So uh, it'll be really interesting to hear you guys as well, who probably don't have the history of this album like I do you know, with this album. I've had this album for a long, long, long time, but I don't have that quite the same emotional connection. Yeah. Um, and like yourself, it's definitely not my favourite Sabbath album. My favourite Sabbath eaters are in different places completely. But I do know the album really well. I haven't even given it a thought yet as to orders, but I know, I know roughly where certain things will fall. There's no doubt about it. But yeah, it's an album I know inside out, but I... Yeah, looking forward to it. And I know that Simon loves it. He, he could do this right now, I'm sure. Yeah. 
Simon, I promise you when we next do the ranking the songs on classic albums, it it will be something you really love a lot and maybe we don't like as much. So that we're gonna oh, like, like, like by the hell you mean <laughs> <laughs> or the Doobie Brothers, you mean okay. <laughs> I'm I'm ready and willing to tackle something that I don't dig too much. I'm, I'm ready for it. I, I I don't mind that at all. So anyway, you guys you guys can discuss and figure out something to uh, throw my way in the not too distant future. So sounds good. So that's what you got next week, folks. Ranking the songs on a classic album. That album is Black Sabbath's Paranoid. Till then, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. All together, all the damn time. And I promise next week I will have a beer with these fine gentlemen. So uh, till then, for Stephen Reed and Simon Bray, I am Pete Pardo. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, everybody. See you next Saturday here on the UK Connection. Bye-bye. <laughs>